high voltage on the ground cable temperature. We have a high voltage cable. In fact, there are three cables in flat formation. The cables are energized, they are connected to the three phase AC voltage source, but the load is not connected. Our task is to calculate the temperature of the cable. This example is, in fact, part of a larger example described in IEC 60853-2. And in that large example, after the temperature is stabilized, the current is switched on. Here we simulate only the first part. So first I'm going to simulate AC conduction problem and calculate the losses. Then I'm going to pass the losses to thermal problem and to calculate the temperature distribution. There is no way to specify tension delta in quick field material properties, so instead I'm going to use the apparent value of electrical conductivity. You can see the equation on the slide. Okay, let's start quick field now and run the simulation. In quick field, I create a new problem cable electric. Next. Problem type is AC conduction. Model class is plain parallel. I'm going to simulate only a cross section of the cable. Frequency is 50 Hz. Length units are millimeters. And I'm going to calculate the losses per one meter of the cable length. So the model Z length is one meter. Finish. On the left is the problem pane, and on the right is the geometry model editor window. You can draw the geometry model here, or you can import the geometry model from AutoCAD DXF file. The model is simple, so I'm going to create it here from scratch. First, I need to insert a circle with a diameter. Let's open the IEC standard and take the data from the Example. Here are the diameters. Insert a circle with a diameter 57.5 millimeters, then another circle, and another circle, and another circle. And another circle, and the last one. Okay. Now let's assign labels. The labels you can explain the geometric object's meaning and provide the material properties. Switch to select objects mode, click the object to select, and type in the label name. This is a conductor. This is the main insulation. This is the sheath. And this is the jacket. And these thin layers are semiconducting screens, but in my model, I'm going to assign them the same properties as the insulation. Conductor screen, conductor, and the sheave screen. Okay, the cables are buried at the depth of one meter, and the spacing between cable centers is 300 millimeters. So switch to select objects mode. Select the cable, right click, move selection, displacement by one meter down, and I need to copy this duplicate selection 300 millimeters to the right, and again duplicate selection. 300 millimeters to the left. 
the cables are buried in the ground so let's draw the ground surface switch to insert mode this would be the ground surface boundary change the light type to the half arc this would be the ground below boundary and here at the top would be the air block boundary let's again assign labels this is air this is ground and this is the boundary between the air and the ground for electric analysis i do not need to assign label here but i'm going to simulate thermal analysis later so for this edge i assign label convection now let's provide physical properties for these labels let's zoom in i need two labels more I'm going to calculate the electric field distribution. So for the conductor, I didn't specify any properties because there is no electric field inside conductor. Instead, I should specify the electric potential at the conductor surface. So the, for the conductor surface, I assign label. This is conductor E. And for this label, I specify electric potential. The cable voltage is 400 kilovolts, but in fact, this is the root mean square value. I should specify the magnitude of the sinusoidal wave here, which is times square root of 2 more. Okay. And the shift is grounded, so at this edge, I assign label 0. And for this label, I specify zero electric potential. The same I should do for the cable phase B and phase C. So this is cable phase B. Select the surface of the conductor. To select multiple objects at the same time, hold the control button first. This is conductor phase B. And the shift is grounded. The same label is zero. For the conductor phase B, I specify the same magnitude of electric potential, which is 400 kilovolts, multiplied by the square root of two. Let's remember this value. But the phase shift now is 120 degrees. Okay, let's proceed with the conductor phase C. Again, I assign label with conductor surface, phase C. I assign label to the shape surface, zero. And for the conductor surface, I specify electric potential value. And the phase shift now is 240 degrees. Okay. As I said, there is no electric field inside conductor, so for the shift, I don't specify any properties. For the insulation, the electric permittivity is 2.5, and to be able to calculate the dielectric losses in the insulation, I should specify the apparent value of the electrical conductivity, which is 6.95. Pico Siemens per meter, Pico means times 10 to the power of minus 12. Okay, and the same properties I'm going to assign to the semiconducting layers. For other blocks, there is no need to assign properties as the electric field is contained between the conductor and the screen. So for the jacket, I do not specify any properties. And for the ground as well, I do not specify any properties. And for the air, 
I do not specify any properties. Okay, the convection label will be used in the thermal analysis here. It has no physical meaning, so I double click and do not specify any properties here. Just click OK and you see the zero mark next to the label name. Now the geometry model and the material properties are ready. Before I can start the analysis, I should build the final entanglement. Just press this button and the mesh will be generated. Let's zoom in to see how the mesh looks inside the cables. Pretty dense. And I believe I need more dense mesh here at the surface, so I'm going to add the vertex here. Let's repeal the mesh. Now the mesh distribution more or less uniform. Okay, save all problem files and solve the problem. Let's take a look at the results. You will see the column map of the electric field strength, and I can adjust the field picture and switch on the column map of the drawer heat distribution. Let's adjust the scale. Here it is. You can use the control tool click to select the block, follow to the integrals, and calculate the actual value of the power produced in a volume. Power. 10 watts per 1 meter of the cable length. So these are the power loss in the dielectric. Remember, this cable is energized. It is connected to the voltage source, but the load is not connected, so there is no electric current in the conductor. And the only losses in the cable are dielectric losses. The cable is kept energized for many hours, many days, and our task is to calculate the the state temperature of the cable. So next I'm going to simulate the thermal problem. File new problem. Cable heat. Next. Problem type is steady state heat transfer. Model class is plain parallel, length you need some millimeters. I'm going to reuse the same geometry model file that was used in electric problem. So here I click Browse and locate the model file MOD that was used in electric problem. Here it is. Finish. The geometry model is the same and the labels are already assigned, but in thermal problem we should provide thermal properties for the labels. We have the paper insulation oil field cable and the thermal resistivity of the insulation is 5. In quick field for the insulation I should specify the reciprocal value thermal conductivity. So 1 divided by 5 is 0 0.2. Okay, the same thermal conductivity I should specify for the semiconducting layers, 0 0.2, 0 0.2. Conductor is made of copper and its thermal conductivity is 380. Sheath is made of lead and its thermal conductivity is 35. Jacket thermal conductivity is let me check again. 3.5. This is thermal resistivity, and I need a reciprocal value. 3.5. This is the thermal conductivity. Okay. For the ground, I use IEC data. Thermal resistivity is 1. Thermal conductivity is 1. The air is moving around and I cannot simulate the air movement, so I do not provide any properties for the air. Instead, at the boundary between the ground and the air, I specify the convection boundary condition. 
the convection coefficient is 10 and the air temperature is again let's check the standard the air temperature is 10 okay these labels do not have any physical meaning in thermal problems so i do not provide any physical properties for these labels just double click and then click ok and you see this zero mark next to the label name that means that this label doesn't contain any data and doesn't affect the results the thermal problem setup is done now i'm going to transfer the losses from the electric problem to the thermal problem you see the losses distribution is not uniform to be able to transfer values from one problem to another problem both problems should be based on the same geometry model file that is our case you see a thermal problem geometry model file is cable underscore electric dot mod and electric problem uses the same geometry model file so i will be able to transfer values between problems in thermal problem i open properties follow to the link step and choose the link type the generated heat now i should browse and select the problem that contains this data this is our electric problem of course add the link okay now the generated heat will be automatically transferred from the electric problem to the thermal problem there is no need to specify manually losses in the blocks the losses will be transferred automatically so i save all problem files and solve thermal problem the problem is solved let's take a look at the results here you can see the temperature distribution this is the temperature distribution in the ground when the cables are energized they are connected to the voltage source but the load is not connected this temperature rise is caused only by the dielectric losses in the cable insulation if you search for the cable dielectric loss on our website you will find the example page here you can read about problem setup browse the solution section take a look at the result pictures and download the simulation files simulation files may be opened and the results may be viewed using any quick field edition including quick field student edition that you can download from our website for free